Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Feeds and speeds can be tricky to get right, and although we've tried to provide you guys with a safe starting point for cutting parameters in the past, a one-size-fits-all spreadsheet can't capture all the nuances of machining. I wanted to start a new series of videos, maybe we can call it Material Mondays or something catchy and hashtagable like that, where I'll try a specific material, cutter, and CNC combination, and give you guys a usable recipe for some common toolpath types. This way, you guys not only have visual confirmation that certain parameters work, but also are aware of some things to look out for like chip evacuation or acoustics. So to kick things off, here's our 102Z 8th inch 2 flute coated end mill for aluminum, cutting in, well, aluminum. Pocketing toolpaths are a staple of machining, as that's how most people clear cavities. Usually, you don't want to run at 100% step over, 40% is a good place to start, but you could vary it by plus or minus 30%. Here's an example at 50% step over, 20 inch per minute feed rates, and 10,000 RPM. Depth of cut is 0.012 inches, you can trade step over for depth or speed, and find the compromise you like best, but this is a safe enough starting point that you can use. Slotting or full width of cut contours are the most common beginner toolpaths out there, you just pick a profile and trace it, but it's also the most taxing toolpath type for any machine. You'll find that shallow passes will be necessary. In aluminum, I would recommend 0.01 inches per step down and a feed rate of 20 inches per minute. Running at 10,000 RPM, that translates to a chip load of 1 thou per tooth, which is a healthy size cut for a desktop machine. You can go slower if you want to be a little more conservative, but the smaller your chip load, the more heat you're building up in the cut. I wouldn't recommend going below 10 inches per minute with these settings unless you also proportionally lower your RPM as well. Reducing speed can help you make the cut quieter if that's an important factor for your situation. And lastly is the adaptive clearing toolpath, my personal favorite because it subjects the spindle to very consistent cutting forces. 10,000 RPM, 30 inches per minute, 0.012 inch optimal load, 0.03 inch depth of cut. The tone of this cut is very even, and although these settings remove material a little bit slower than the pocketing toolpath, the operation is overall way more reliable and you can push a little harder than this if you want. If you get into deeper cuts and cavities, you'll want to get chips out of the way so they don't jam your cutter or get dragged against the walls. A vacuum with a small nozzle or some compressed air would do wonders here. And of course, these are all roughing toolpaths. If you want the most pristine surface possible, you'll want to take a light finishing pass so that your cutter can slice through the material with as little vibration as possible. I left 12 thousandths of an inch extra on my walls and 6 thousandths extra on the floors. My finishing contours are at 20 inches per minute with an eighth inch step down, and my pocket finishing toolpath is also 20 inches per minute with a 60% step over. This means no matter how rough your initial cuts might be, your final cuts will look much smoother. Stock to leave is a powerful feature in more advanced CAM programs, so if you're on Fusion or another software package with that functionality, definitely make use of that. Also, make use of ramp and lead-in movements to ease the cutter into your material. And I guess while we're here, let's also lay out some known safe aluminum feeds and speeds for our 16th inch cutter, the 112Z. Pocketing, 10,000 RPM, 14 inches per minute, which gives you a chip load of 7 tenths, 8 thou depth of cut, 60% step over or 0.047 inches, and if you look closely, the first movements in a pocketing toolpath are basically just like a contour operation. The end mill is plowing into the material with 100% of its face. Because of this, I typically don't use a faster feed rate when pocketing, it's usually the same settings as when contouring or something close to it. For an adaptive toolpath, I'll keep that RPM cranked up, 20 inch per minute feed rates, 9 thou optimal load, 20 thou depth of cut. Because the cutting forces are smaller, I know I can afford to use less stock to leave. Here, I'm leaving a 10 thou margin radially and 5 thou axially. My finishing toolpath on the walls is in 0.03 inch step downs and 14 inches per minute. Again, I'm regressing to that smaller 7 thou chip load for surface finish, but going deeper than the adaptive despite a similar radial depth of cut. And that's a quick guide to how I usually mill aluminum on the Nomad. I'll have links in the description to my Fusion files for these test cuts if you want to take a gander at how I set them up. Having a desktop class machine is no excuse for not being able to make good looking parts in metal. I hope this quick video helps you make the most of your Nomad. If you have any other suggestions for material, machine, and cutter combinations to test, leave them in the comment section down below. 
Good luck and have fun machining, folks.